The place was a crossroads for the crooked, the desperate, and those just looking for fast money, or a deal best kept hidden from the tower. It is one of the most brutal places in the Matoran universe, a pit of iniquity, where the inhabitants carved out a life of combat and competition, where society constantly teeters on the edge of total disintegration. Welcome to the island of Stelt. Stelt formed the southernmost edge of a cluster of islands that included Karzani, Zarkaz and Zia, and was situated off the coast of the Trentcrom Peninsula. It was a hive of dodgy dealings, where rough sorts would often be found on its streets. Its importance as a port meant it attracted the attention of many external hostile factions, not to mention the internal factions that often threatened to tear the island apart. Given its lawlessness, there are no records of Tower even stepping foot on this land. The island's loose society consists of clans and positions of varying rank, so can we discern some sense of the structure to it? Let's start from the bottom and work up. Here we'll find the class of being to which the future Dark Hunter Gladiator belongs, kept as a slave to entertain crowds in tests of combat, hence his future Dark Hunter moniker. His bloodthirstiness saw dozens of Stelchian bruisers and guards to restrain him from destroying the entire island. His thirst for battle won him some admirers among sleeper agents for the Shattered One stationed on the island, and he was broken out of the jail in which he was sent to rot and brought to Odina. The Bruisers are another class of inhabitants on Stelt, the most famous member being Cracker, who would also go on to join the Dark Hunters. This species occupied a rank one above the likes of Gladiator, on account of them being trusted to hold some basic responsibilities on the island. However, they ranked below Sidorak, as well as the few Matoran who lived on the island. They had limited intellect, but possessed great strength. Bruisers were often used as guards and for labour on the island. Unlike Sidorak species, they cannot use Kanohi, and were all equipped with blue and white armour. A member of this species was also part of the fusion that created the Golden Being, along with the Zyglak, a Vortex, and the Paraka. Given the absence of Tower, it may be surprising that Matoran lived and worked on Stelt, operating as merchants and traders in the bustling port to facilitate shady deals away from the prying eyes of Tower and the Order of Matanui. They formed the middle class of Stelt, above the likes of Cracker and Gladiator species, but underneath Sidorak. The Matoran here were aware of various elements, but we do know there was at least one of iron here from the Brothers in Arms serial. Mazaka walked into an inn in one of the nastier parts of Stelt. The whole island was in an uproar. Something about a monstrous reptilian thing tearing the roof off a building. He didn't see any sign of the giant creatures, so he dismissed it as just another wild Stelton story. He was here to see a Fae Matoran, whose name changed every few months. A rogue Ninra crafter, the Matoran had a bad right arm, the result of an accident in a forge. In the next social rank up we have the race of beings to which Sidorak is a member. They operated by a feudal society comprised of clans, and Sidorak himself held minor power, answering to a leader who acted closer to a king. This leader is also a character we all know well, and Sidorak, being a schemer, sought to rise in power and betrayed his clan leader to the Makuta of Stelt, who subjected him to horrific experimentation, including but not limited to the Rituka power of his future viceroy. The end result of this experiment was the being we know as Voparak. Sidorak often took credit for the achievements of others, and aimed to rise in status through underhanded means, as evidenced by him selling out his clan leader to the Brotherhood. In a somewhat ironic twist of fate, he would become a king despite his rejection from the Dark Hunters, leading the Vizrak Horde on behalf of Makuta Teradax. It was at the hands of fellow Stelchian Gladiator that Sidorak met the feat, which saw his ejection from the island of Ardina. Down below, Dark Hunters of various species were engaging in mock combat to hone their skills. The Shadowed One pointed to two trainees in the midst of furious sparring. The one on the right is called Gladiator. His opponent is a recent recruit named Sidorak. Observe. The battle that followed was intense, but short. The crimson armoured Sidorak was powerful, but his fighting style was crude, limited to charging forward in hopes of landing a blow. Gladiator dove, dodged, and showed amazing agility despite his impressive size. When Sidorak, exhausted, got an opening, Gladiator struck with two swift blows. Sidorak hit the ground and lay still. In the period between 7,000 and 3,000 years ago, Sidorak's apparent successes, rightly or wrongly credited, attracted the attention of the Brotherhood of Makuta, and gradually rose in power using methods not dissimilar from those he employed on stealth. 
for example taking credit for the idea to mutate the Toa Haga into the Rahaga. Beginning as a mere courier between Stel and neighbouring Zia, Sidorak's continuing service saw him eventually become king of the Vizorak and leave his homeland on a campaign of conquests from which he would ultimately never return. And lastly at the top of the pyramid, before he was toppled from it by one of his own, is a being we would later know as Voparak, although at this point he's far from recognisable from the form he took when serving the Shadow Gun. At one point in time not looking too different from Sidorak, Voparak ruled over a clan to which the future Vizorak king belonged. Ever scheming and duplicitous, Sidorak eyed Voparak's position with envy and urged the Makuta assigned to their island to select Voparak for experimentation. By the time the Makuta of Stelt's experimentations were complete, a new being emerged from the regal husk that came before, a radically changed, hulking brute that could sense fluctuations in the fabric of time, making him the perfect tool to find the Kenohi Vahi for the Brotherhood of Makuta. In what turned out to backfire on the Makuta, Voprak was sent to Odina to learn discipline from the Dark Hunters, however his time there saw him become loyal to the Dark Hunters instead, and only saw the Shadowed One as his one true master. The Brotherhood's leader would then find himself in battle with the being for the possession of the Mask of Time alongside his master. One can only wonder what Teradax thought to see the powerful being created with the intention to serve him, now fighting him for that most coveted of artefacts. And that completes our look at the social structure of Stealth, its inhabitants and its history. Thank you for watching and see you next time.